The FBI has, um, for quite some time now, had the capacity to send and receive digital fingerprints and has worked um, with all 50 states, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, the District of Columbia, to be able to receive those digital fingerprints from individuals who are arrested throughout the United States. However, the immigration-related components of homeland security um, were not operating on the same platform. They were, with some delay, starting to collect digital fingerprints, but only for immigration violators. Um, some bright individual at some point realized that ICE could really facilitate its work um, in detecting and apprehending aliens convicted of crimes by linking its systems with those of the FBI. The Secure Communities Program is, is a linking of electronic databases that contain digitized fingerprints. Fingerprints relating to criminal arrests and fingerprints relating to aliens known to be in the United States. It, it works this way. When an individual is taken into custody for a crime, they're taken to the police station or the county sheriff's office and booked. Their fingerprints are taken. These days, almost everywhere, that's not done with fingerprint cards and ink. It's done digitally on a, on a glass platen. The fingerprints are captured and immediately fired through that police department's electronic system into a state identification bureau where they siphon off a copy of the digital prints for their records and move them to the FBI, which siphons them off and compares them against past criminal history relating to those prints, that individual, and if there is a past rap sheet, shoots it back to the State Identification Bureau and back to the arresting police department so that they'll know that the person has a, a past history, a rap sheet. Secure Communities merely adds the step of shooting those digital fingerprints to bounce against the Department of Homeland Security's own alien fingerprint database. And if there is a match there, firing that data down into ICE so that ICE can scrub the match, determine who the alien is, whether that makes them deportable, and then at the local level, finish the triangle, connect with the arresting police department, and do what is necessary to file a detainer and ultimately take the person into custody for removal. That process takes place usually in the lion's share of cases within the span of an hour. It can be done near instantaneously. A lot of people have misunderstandings of how the system works and they seem to think that first that it is massive and a dragnet that uh, initiates an inexorable chain of events from which there is a kind of Kafka-esque no return and no escape and that is completely untrue. In the first place there is a great deal of human intervention at the Law Enforcement Support Center, at the field offices, where technicians and officers all along the way and supervisors are looking at the data and scrubbing it, making rational decisions about whether to file detainers or not. And secondly, it needs to be understood that if there is no record of the individual, there can be no match. And if there is no match, none of the other processes take place. What that does mean, however, is that some people are going to pass through the system who are in fact aliens simply because they're not of record because they crossed the border and were never apprehended. So there is a limitation on it, but there is also um, very little, almost no possibility that someone will plummet through a trapdoor into a system from which they cannot get out and in which they should not have been. That is not a reality of this system.